Welcome back everyone to Sully's Rods and Customs. Um, haven't, haven't put many videos forward for the last um, last month or two. Christmas, a lot of house renovations, stuff like that happening. Um, also been chasing the correct engine paint colour for this um, this HQ253 engine. I'll show you what I've settled on. Um, it's, it's called early rocket red you can see it's not the bright not the bright orange rocket red you normally see it has a um a nice kind of bit more of a pastel -y sort of orange which is the correct orange color for these engines so um it's taken me quite some time a lot of research a lot of getting paints mixed at um with different paint vendors or dealers or supply places to try and get that color every time i got one mixed it came out really bright um, from what I worked out, um, it's called it's called early rocket red. It's probably HK to early HJ um, Holden Kingswood that sort of um, age group. I think up to maybe maybe late seventy four, early seventy five, somewhere around there. After that, it went to the brighter orange rocket red that you see, which has I think it even has a clear coat over it which is why those engines look so crap after a while and they kind of peel off and the engines look pretty sad. And the old HQ seem to, um, their enamel seems to hang in there for a long time. Um, block's been all um, cleaned and honed. The pistons uh, were in really good condition. This is a very low, low mileage or low kilometer engine. Um, so I just give them a quick hone. I'm reusing the same pistons. I've got new rings, bearings, seals, cam, timing chain, lifters, um, I've serviced the heads, which you would have seen in one of the previous videos there. They were really good nick as well. So it's time to get some paint on this thing. So what I, what I thought I'd spend a bit of time on is showing you how I prep an engine for um, paint. I've obviously already done it, um, but I just want to explain it to you. Um, just so you understand how much work goes into it and how much cleaning this thing has been. Hot tanked, I brought it home and degreased and, and water blasted it as well. And I cleaned it and I had the um, I had the, they come like a pipe cleaner through the oil galleys and stuff to make sure everything was clean and I washed it all the again. Water blasted inside, I water, gurneyed inside all the um, water jackets, drilled them all out so they're nice and clean, washed it back out again. I just degreased it and prepped it again tonight with, um, with a bit of, um, a bit of prep sole type stuff. This is just a one from, um, Auto, Auto One, I think I got it, just a wax and grease remover. Um, wiped it all down, which is what I did to that sump, and it's ready for ready for painting. So I'll grab the camera and I'll show you what I've done to the engine here. I'll just bring it a bit closer for you. So it probably looks a little bit odd. Um, I've got all the tape on the on the bases here. I might just um, put a bit of tape over that engine number for now, don't want someone stealing my number off it. Um, yeah, so you can notice on here that I've actually put all the the shape of the actual head gasket that's going to go on there. I'll grab the gasket, I'll put it on there, I'll show you. This is how I do it. I fully tape up the decks, the faces there. I, um, I put the gasket on it. I mark around it with a texter and as you can see other than where my engine number was there. As you can see down here, hopefully you can see, down here you can actually see metal. Um, so you can still see some of the cylinder head down the bottom here. That area needs to get paint. If you don't get paint in there, when you when you put the cylinder head on, um, that bit's raw, you'll get rust runs down the side of your engine here. So it's pretty important to try and, like, I, I cover that engine number there, but it's pretty important that, um, I might actually just swing it around so you can see it on the other side. There's no, obviously, no engine number on this side. And you can see that okay? Yep. I'll bring it a bit closer now so you can see it a bit better. A lot of glare off those lights. But you can see I traced around all the, all the, um, the bore sizes, which, is, which, you, which you can see out here is the, is the head gasket side. And if I bring my finger in a couple of millimetres, you can actually see the, um, I might just see if I can get those cameras to bounce off the roof or the lights to bounce off the roof more rather than shine directly down there. That's better. 
this one too. Okay, so you can see down here. Um, and if I put the if I put the head gasket on there, actually if I don't put the head gasket on there, if I just trace around it like I've done the other side with a with a sharpie tech stuff, if I can find the thing, or is that here? This will sort of show you how much clearance the engine has from the head gasket to the actual cylinder bore. So I'll just run my finger around it like this and I'll trace around inside it. So this is cylinder size. So this is a standard, standard bore 253. So that's that's the actual cylinder size you can see there. The outside of that black line. Um, the inside of this the inside of this other black line is the cylinder head size. So you can see here looks pretty good, but inside there you can actually see that the the bore is a lot smaller than the than the than the head gasket. So anyway, what I do is I put it on there, mark it up, tape it all up, and I get a razor blade. Um, just a just a simple little razor blade you get in like those scraper kits. I think it's um where's the where's the where's the lens on this thing? Here it is here. It's um, just one of those ones, got a little hard at the top there. And I just cut around those lines. I'll take this tape and this cover off the front here and I'll show you the front of the engine. I'll do exactly the same thing. So there's the front of the engine there. You can see there, I've taped, I've taped around that. This is the gasket that goes in the front of there. If I put it on there, you'll see when I drew around it with a sharpie, I have no, no tape outside, no tape outside of my gasket. So why I do that is um, once once it's all painted, I take all the tape and stuff back off. Anything that's supposed to be covered by a gasket is covered by a gasket. Anything that's supposed to be um, that's supposed to be sealed away um, behind things is sealed away. There's no exposed metal. I get no rust stains and I like seeing I like seeing a panel like a, a component then a gasket then another component then a gasket I, like, I hate absolutely hate with a passion that when people just put it all together spray the whole block spray everything in its path it just looks cheap and nasty it looks like people didn't give a shit about it looks like they don't know what they're doing for a start um, so yeah, I'll have I'll have paint in every one of these gaps around this engine here, right? Underneath it will be exactly the same. If I flip it up, you can see here on the side, this thing had like three or four coats of paint on it. The hot tank didn't get it all off. But you can see here, this is the this is the point where the oil pump goes. I'll bring that over and I'll show you. So that's where the oil pump goes. So if you just take that whole section up, you'll get paint in that. You'll get paint over the whole thing. Um, I mean, you'll get no paint around the whole thing. And then when you put the actual gasket in there and the oil pump on it, you'll see this. You'll either see an exposed piece of um, of metal here, which will probably rust. I mean, you can see how how many little gaps you get around this thing. Even this little section down here will be um, will be paint free. So you can see that bit down there. That'll be paint. I mean, that'll have paint on it. That'll have paint on it. That'll have paint on it. It'll all match. Everything will be just right. Even if you look inside these, this is where my Welsh plugs go. If you look inside these Welsh plug holes, I put tape in there on the ceiling face of where I've got to put the the, the ceiling gasket material, the ceiling um, uh, what do you call it? Like a I think it's like aviation aviation gasket maker that goes in there. Then you then you bung your Welsh plugs into it. If you get paint on there, you're trying to seal against paint, or you've got to sand the paint out of it. So little trick, just put some tape in there, keep your, your ceiling face clean and it makes the job a hell of a lot easier and it makes it a hell of a lot neater. Let's just bring that camera back up a bit there. Um, flip it over a bit more. There you go, you can see, same on the other side, tape in the holes here. The whole bottom is taped up, everything's covered. Um, I've just got a bit of cardboard just sitting on top of it. Now I haven't over taped it, I just, I mean if you sit, I actually did, if you sit the sump on top of here, this this tape line around this side here represents the actual size of the gasket or, or the seal whatever you want to call it and this is that this is that seal here right so as you can see if i put that on there it is exactly 
the same size as that gasket. There's no exposed paint under there. It will seal perfect anywhere like like this area here. You can see the, the gasket run, the, this cork gasket runs along there and it exposes that bit of metal, it exposes that little bit, then it goes nice and neat all the way up. And then it exposes this bit here. Um, same on the other side over here, I've taped this area up. This area over here is where the starter motor mounts. Um, if you get paint all over that, I've had the starter motor sitting on there and it matches that size. If I get paint all over that, when I tighten the starter motor down, it'll eventually come loose because the paint will just either flake off and move or, um, or it'll have the wrong, wrong torque on the bolts when it gets tightened up. So pretty much what I got there. Um, I've, got a, I've got a can of um, VHT high temperature engine primer, which you can see here. And then I have my actual orange mixed up. For those that want to match that colour, which is what more what I can make out is the correct colour for this engine. I had this mixed at Auto Pro. Um, I tried Auto Barn, they couldn't mix the colour. Um, so this is what it's called here. I don't know if the light's shining there. It says Make Holden Australia code 08929. Description Rocket Red. So this is the formula is 170328. This is early rocket red. So this is like HK, HQ, that sort of era. So that's what you need for it. So I'm just gonna, tonight what you'll, all you'll see me do is give it a prime. And then um, tomorrow afternoon, I'll, I'll when I get home from work, I'll, I'll get the, the color out and I'll put some color on this thing. So just, if you wanna watch, you can see me um, paint this thing up now. One thing that's pretty important when you're, when you're painting with pressure pack cans, I'm not sure if you can see that, but if you look underneath this can, see all those dints in there? It's kind of like internal hull damage to this can. If you don't have those dints in the bottom of the can, you have paint sitting on the bottom and you haven't shaken that um, you haven't shaken that can enough, and you've got to go back and keep shaking it and getting it ready for the paint. So I've done that before because I already primed that, that sump over there earlier on today. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll go through and I'll give this thing a quick a quick lick of the, um, the primer and once the once the primer's on here I will um, get the engine enamel colour on it tomorrow afternoon like I mentioned. I'm not going to overcoat this thing with primer. I don't want a thick coat here. I just want a little bit of fluff there off my tap cloth. Just get that off of there. Um, I don't want a really thick coat on this thing because if I do it gives it opportunity to flake off because it gets too thick. So, a nice thin primer coat on here is all it takes. Um, you might look at this block and think, geez, you could have cleaned it up a bit. This, you can see a lot of the casting flash and stuff, thing, stuff around here. This is a, this is going in my Monaro. It's a genuine HQ two-door. Um, I need to keep this thing looking as standard as I can. Um, so all that flash and stuff has to stay there. I can't, I can't technically get rid of it. I probably could, but then it doesn't keep it, doesn't keep it like a genuine look on the car. Um, a lot of guys I spoke to said I need to, I need to um, make sure I get a bit of extra overspray over the valve cover, over the back of the valve covers and stuff. Um, simply because when Holden did it, they. They just sprayed the shit out of everything. There's a lot of fluff around here. I really should have had another look at that. Um, in my haste to get this thing painted, I didn't check it out well enough. But anyway, um, so yeah, I, I like to prime them. Reason being, once it's primed, you can kind of see if you get any fish eyes in the paint. It, um, it'll show up pretty easily. Fish eyes are where you've got a little bit of oil or something still on the on the item that you're going to paint um, and it will show up like a real dodgy like dodgy brothers painted it for me i'll get this i think i've got the engine number off there don't want to paint that in so again just a quick coat nothing over the top just a bit to help any of the bits of some of this paint is just it's kind of, the old paint's kind of ground into the block. Um, it's kind of like it's just stuck in the, in the casting, in some of the casting flash. So 
Um, I can't get it all out. I can't get it off. I got the wire wheel on it. Tried to tried to wire wheel a lot of it off. Didn't want to come off. Um, kind of pissed me off a bit actually. But um, I figured if I just prime it, it gives it a good coat. Gives it something to stick to when I go for my actual colour. That's all done there. A little bit on the back there. Anywhere on the side where you'll actually see the You'll see paint, just put this baby over. Put it over there so the engine number's not visible. Alright, I've got plenty of cover back here. Um, just so you know, I've already cleaned my hands, so um, no need for waxing grease. Remember, I haven't touched anything other than this, either this engine or the um, or the camera. So this bit here is quite important. Now this is a bit I was talking about along the side of the cylinder head here, where the um, where the gasket doesn't touch. Now you just got to spray the block at a different angle because there's lots of little shape changes in it. So you want to get all the paint wherever you can, everywhere you can, in every little hole. Every little nook and cranny. Give it a shake every now and then just to get it. Keep the paint moving. Use my back there. Back of my head. Do the same over here. Just paint the bits that hang out the side of the gasket. Like everyone has their own own way of doing things. People have probably seen me doing this and go, you just freaking wasted a shitload of time um, prepping that block when it's only, a, it's only an engine. Um, it's only an engine, but it's an engine on a fairly nice car. All right, I can see a couple of bits of fluff stuck in there. I'll have to pick them off as I, as I um, strip all this, not as I actually, a bit of this in there. As I um, get it ready for the, the rocket red, give it a couple of long strokes down the side just to finish it off. Just to make sure I haven't missed anywhere. So there you go, that's me. That's enough of a primer coat on that. Um, I, like I said, I only put this temporary in the front, temporary in the bottom. I just chuck a rag in the valley there just to. Keep everything out. A tiny bit of overspray there's not so bad, but um, you really don't want to get that thing stuck solid with paint. Um, try and keep them as clean as you can. Let's just zoom in a bit for you there. All right, that's that's the engine done. So it's in primer. So I'll probably end this video here now, um, and I'll. Um, Get these lights. I've got a couple of heat lights here. I'm just going to stick them on just to make it dry a bit. If it dries enough tonight and flashes off enough tonight, I'll um I'll get the I'll get the rocket red on it. It's um it's quite late. It's probably 9:30 at night. It's not late, um, but it's probably not enough time for this this paint to flash off. I think it says in the can that you can repaint it after 40 minutes or something, but I don't think that means change the colour on the engine. I think it just needs you can recoat the primer after that point in time. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's pretty simple. It's nothing technical about what I did here. Just take your time, tape up everything, put your gasket on there, mark around the sides of them all, um, cut them with a razor blade, keep the lines nice and sharp, keep them like one millimeter underneath where the gasket's gonna actually sit, and you'll have awesome straight lines and stuff underneath your gaskets. You'll, you'll be very happy with the, with the paint job on it, and you'll be very happy with the finished assembled engine so um, keep watching and I'll show you what she looks like when she's um, fully painted up in the Holden early rocket red. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll just give you a quick, quick glimpse again of the of what the orange is like. That's only had one coat on it um, but that's early rocket red. It's not really bright orange like I mentioned but um, it's 
it's kind of more of a pastel orangey color. So if you like what I'm doing here, keep watching. Um, watch the rest of the video. If I've got an extra one on it, extra bit on this, or um, like and subscribe. All of that helps. Um, there's a lot of channels out there now to watch. A lot of good ones, a lot of crap ones. I think mine's probably average. Um, but um, you know, as long as you just get something out of it, I'll I'll um, I'll keep filming what I do. It doesn't take much. It's kind of a bit embarrassing doing the whole talking to the camera thing. It's kind of like I'm sitting to, talking to an audience here, but but there's no one there. And sometimes you forget what you're going to say or, or don't know what to say. But um, if you've got any opportunities that you think you can suggest that I need to improve on, um, hit me up. I'm pretty easy on the comments there. I'll answer every one of them. Um, might not get back to you immediately, but I'll get back to you when I can. So um, keep watching and hope you enjoy the videos. Thanks. Right, uh, we're back. We have the engine all primed. Um, it's been 45 minutes now, but it feels dry. I can't even actually pick it with my finger, so it's, it's quite dry. So I'm going to give it um, at least at least one coat of. Um, of the rocket red tonight. I'll just uh, clear the nozzle and we'll, um, we'll get going on okay? and I'll um, show you how it looks when I'm done. I'll give it a coat, I'll stop the video, I'll, um, I'll get the um, I'll get the heat lights on and dry it out again like I did just then before. I don't know if you've seen um, a genuine um, old school motor when they come from the factory, they, they're definitely not a neat, neatly painted um, engine. Um, they have a lot of overspray and stuff. I don't particularly want to make it that genuine that I overs overspray everything and make it look like shit. Um, just give this thing a quick, just a quick coat over top just to get it all coated. And sealed off. Make sure that, that yep, it's okay. I thought it might have been up in the side of the, the cardboard there, but it's not. Just um, looking for grey areas, which are a bit that I haven't hit with the paint. It kind of looks Fully coated on that side at the moment. I'll give it a flip over. Check it out. Alright, I can see some grey under there. Somewhere in the back here. You gotta remember, um, there's lots of little bits around the back of the engine where it bolts up to where it bolts up to your gearbox, transmission, whatever you want to call it. There's a little gully around through the back of here. There's some bits down the back here where the bell housing. Actually, oh, fuck me, I hit the grey on this. <laughs> there you go over that again. Um, where the bell housing goes on. I mean, all these, all these voice plugs down the back here are invisible. Um, but this bit around in here, around where your the distributor goes in, it's definitely visible there. Um, if you're watching and you 
um, want some more information about that paint color that I've had mixed. Um, I'm assuming that if you take that paint code that I that I um, used and take it to any paint um, paint place, they should be able to mix that for you in whatever brand you want. Um, I think when I eventually found it and found what I was looking for, it was actually a um, PPG PPG color that someone had mixed prior that um, they had mixed up. I can't remember who it was that I found that I found that had done it, but um, I just I just tried three or four different different versions of this color as I went along until I found the one that I think. Um, looked as close as I could get to the genuine colour. Um, and when I say that, I'm I'm comparing genuine colour to a mate of mine, Silvio Silvio Musket. He's got a really really nice HQ two door, and um, he'll tell you if you see him that I asked him at a car show where he got his, his paint colour. He explained to me who he got off. One of the guys on one of the forums had it mixed. Um, and he gave Silvio some of the colour of the paint and he used it. Um, I tried to follow up with that, that supplier. Um, they weren't prepared to help out. There was a Holden dealer up in Sydney somewhere. Um, sound like they were just too busy for such a small order of paint, but yeah, I don't know, I wouldn't recommend them, if they're not going to help the little guy, I wouldn't take my car to get him service, I'm not going to bag them out too much, but hopefully you can see that now, that's one full coat there of engine colour on it, you can see it's not that bright rocket red, it is just a kind of a dull colour, but that's exactly what it's supposed to be. Um, Plenty of pins in this garage here. Once it's finished, I'll take a bit more of a video and show you. Um, I'll open the garage door now and get a bit of air in here because um, I'm trying to die on a fume. So keep watching and you'll see the rest.